Today, at 8.15am, the morning quiet southeast of Matishki was shattered. A formation of Ukrainian Sukhoi Su-25 Frogfoot attack jets, flying low to avoid radar detection, broke through the haze. They fired volleys of unguided rockets, their impacts lighting up the distant ridge in flashes of orange and white. Immediately after, two Mi-24 Hind helicopter gunships moved in, releasing rockets from their stub wings that raced towards fortified Russian bunkers less than a quarter of a mile from the front line. At the same time, the ground assault began. The low rumble of T-72 main battle tanks intensified into a mechanical roar as they advanced from the edge of a forest, supported by a barrage from concealed D-30 122mm howitzers. Across the valley, a Russian S-300 surface-to-air missile system activated its radar, its electronic signature suddenly appearing on sensors. This was assessed not as a defensive measure, but as a tactical ploy to lure Ukrainian assets into exposing their own positions. Anticipating such a move, Ukrainian electronic warfare units operating from mobile trucks projected a dense field of electromagnetic jamming, effectively blinding Russian radar systems throughout the sector. This initial phase was not a chaotic attack, but a carefully orchestrated strike intended to induce systemic paralysis across the Russian defensive network before the main ground forces were fully committed. Minutes after the initial air and artillery strikes, the operation's second phase began, with a focus on gaining information superiority and conducting close quarters reconnaissance. A group of four-legged, gun-mounted robotic units was deployed from the back of armoured Husky tactical support vehicles. These unmanned ground vehicles, often called robot dogs, moved with remarkable agility through the damaged streets and deserted courtyards on the outskirts of Matishki. Equipped with anti-jamming global navigation satellite system receivers and micro-LIDAR sensors, their primary task was to force Russian sentries out from elevated positions on rooftops and in reinforced buildings. Upon identifying targets, the UGVs marked each hostile position with infrared beacons, which were invisible to the naked eye, but clearly visible through thermal optics. Almost instantly, artillery spotter drones circling overhead transmitted the precise coordinates from these beacons to a battery of BM-27 Uragan 220mm multiple launch rocket systems located about two miles to the north. As this took place, the electromagnetic environment grew more intense. Ukrainian electronic countermeasure arrays increased their output, creating a powerful wall of electromagnetic noise. This activity distorted radio frequencies and concealed legitimate Ukrainian signals under a thick layer of digital decoys and false signatures. For the Russian command post at Matishki, the perimeter became a blind spot. Their tactical displays showed ghost signatures, indicating enemy formations that did not exist. Above this chaotic digital battlefield, a swarm of small AI-driven reconnaissance UAVs, each no larger than a hawk, methodically scanned the area with thermal sensors. Their live data streams exposed the heat signatures of Russian vehicles hidden under camouflage netting and in protective embankments. This information was sent directly to a forward data cell, a mobile command unit established in the nearby woods. Here, targeting algorithms processed the data, assigning firing priorities far more quickly than any human crew could. In a desperate bid to regain situational awareness, Russian operators launched their own Orlan 10 reconnaissance drones and activated a Panzer S-1 air defense system on a southern launch pad. The Panzer's twin 30mm cannons fired bursts into the sky, but the shells found nothing but empty air. Its radar screen was saturated with false echoes, mirror images, and decoy signals. The entire Russian defense network was effectively chasing shadows. What had started as a conventional attack had quickly become a sophisticated digital ambush, where every Russian reaction provided more data to Ukraine's adaptive battle network, reshaping the conflict in real time. As the electromagnetic interference saturated the airwaves and the robotic units continued to identify targets, the battle's third phase commenced with a massive artillery barrage. The moment Russian sensors were confirmed to be compromised, coordinated fire missions from three distinct Ukrainian positions began simultaneously. The BM-27 Uragan launchers fired volleys of rockets from their positions in wooded clearings. Further back, batteries of American-supplied M109 Paladin 155mm self-propelled howitzers, which had been quietly moved into the sector weeks earlier, started delivering precise, high-explosive rounds. Mobile multiple launch racks contributed to the assault, firing staggered salvos into pre-planned zones. 
The targeting was highly precise, resulting from a carefully managed fusion of sensor data from multiple sources, including micro UAV feeds, infrared tags from the robotic units, and acoustic bearings triangulated by forward listening posts. This data was processed by the forward command cell, which converted it into exact firing solutions for each artillery system, calculated down to the yard. The artillery fire created overlapping curtains of smoke and steel across the sky. Thermal feeds from the reconnaissance drones showed Russian command trucks, fuel storage, and ammunition depots glowing brightly before they were systematically destroyed. Round after round struck critical logistics hubs and road junctions, supplying the Matishki defenses. A well-timed barrage cut off a key supply route less than half a mile from the base perimeter, while another precision strike destroyed a rear staging area two miles to the east. The Ukrainian strategy was clear disrupt the enemy's ability to move, resupply, and coordinate before launching a direct ground attack. Moscow's response was powerful and direct. Russian Mr. B 152mm towed howitzers and the formidable TOS-1 thermobaric rocket systems replied with heavy counter-battery and area denial fire, setting strips of woodland ablaze. The ground vibrated with the force of the explosions, and smoke clouded the horizon. However, even as Russian artillery created its own patterns of destruction, the Ukrainian batteries kept their distance, using their superior range and sensor advantage to target critical infrastructure, rather than engaging in a direct artillery duel. High above, two Sukhoi Su-57 Felon 5th generation fighters were scrambled from Kubinka Air Base to try and stop the Ukrainian barrage and regain control of the air. As they entered the contested airspace, they were met not only with standard countermeasures like flares and chaff, but also a complex field of digital deception. Ukrainian radio-electronic battle systems generated decoy heat signatures, spoofed identification friend or foe replies, and directed frequency noise that distorted their advanced onboard radars, causing them to track false targets. The pilots observed contacts that would appear and then vanish. Their systems warned of threats that weren't real. With their radar locks failing and their decision-making slowed by the confusing information, the Su-57S were forced into aborted attack runs and evasive actions. Their combat effectiveness was neutralized not by a missile, but by an invisible, adaptive electronic network. By the time the airspace was clear enough to form a coherent picture, the artillery phase had already accomplished its goals. Supply lines were blocked, forward command posts were compromised, and the Russian defensive structure around Matishki was severely weakened. The echoes of the artillery duel were still present when Ukraine initiated its next move, an attack aimed at the core of the Russian defense network. From the western tree line, a special operations team advanced under the cover of the ongoing electronic interference. They moved alongside a light electronic warfare convoy consisting of two armored command vehicles and a single relay jammer on a flatbed truck. Their objective was not armor or ammunition, but the vital communication trunk at Matishiki, the main data link connecting the outer defense ring to Moscow's central command. The assault was surgically precise. An overhead drone swarm mapped the electromagnetic environment, identifying antenna arrays and repeater towers hidden within industrial areas. Each coordinate was sent to the mobile EW team, which then broadcast directed jamming pulses at specific frequencies. Within minutes, the radio spectrum between 3 and 30 megahertz was reduced to white noise. Inside the Russian command bunkers, monitors flickered and consoles froze. While Russian officers could view their local system data, their requests for reinforcements and reports to higher command went unanswered. To ensure a complete communications blackout, Ukrainian operators infiltrated fiber optic junctions at street level, cutting hardline relays with thermite charges that burned through the cables in seconds. 15 minutes into this phase, it was estimated that over 40% of all active communication channels between Matishki and Moscow had been silenced. Calls for artillery support were met with static, and drone feeds froze. The once integrated Russian defense grid was reduced to a series of isolated pockets, each fighting without visibility or coordination. The barrage subsided into a low mechanical hum as both sides paused to reassess the situation. Engines idled behind debris and smoke drifted from shell craters. The air carried the scent of ozone and burnt electronics, a clear sign that the battle had shifted from a contest of physical force to one of sensor warfare. Ukraine began to move its strike teams eastward, advancing through corridors where Russian sensor coverage was weakest. 
This movement was concealed by drones that continued to circle the northern front, feeding false telemetry to Russian radars. In the quiet between volleys, a new power dynamic had been established, one defined not by armoured vehicles, but by control of information. When the last drone feed went dark and the smoke cleared over the damaged ridgelines, the strategic result of the battle became clear. The Matishki operation, which lasted just over 70 minutes, was never designed to capture ground. Its purpose was to fracture Moscow's outer defensive shell. In that brief period, Ukraine had successfully blinded radar systems, severed communication lines, and paralyzed reinforcement routes across the entire northeastern ring. The damage was not measured in destroyed equipment, but in the disruption of the enemy's operational structure. Russia's elite units in the region were compelled to retreat inward, tightening their defensive circle around the capital. The operation leaves a critical question unresolved. Can Moscow's second line of defense adapt and reinforce its network before the next strike? Or has this initial breach already created an opening for a larger campaign aimed at the heart of the city itself?